What is going on, guys? Uh, in this video, I'm going to be reacting to the first two episodes of the ICT 2022 mentorship. But the catch is, it's going to be three years later after I'm profitable after I've already watched this. So I'm going to be using the no rant ones, not the one with the rants. And I'm going to kind of go over my thoughts and like what I truly think now that I'm profitable and whether I agree or disagree with some of the things he's saying. And obviously, everyone's going to have their own opinion. So if I disagree with something and you agree with it, that's okay too. It doesn't really matter. But again, the smartest people learn to respect other people's opinions. So yeah, so I'm just going to be kind of listening to it, giving my thoughts. I really don't remember the first two episodes. So yeah, I'm just going to kind of get right into it. Without further ado, let's begin the video. So coming out of the gate, I just want to let you know that this is predominantly going to be a futures in index trading mentorship okay the idea is going to be presented in the scope of paper trading on tradingview.com but what you're looking at here this is thinkorswim's live data these are actual executions i made today and i want you to compare and contrast with what you see on youtube and other educators where they'll tell so that i don't really understand these executions i'm not gonna lie like it, it kind of looks like he's getting in and off an order block here after an inverse but i don't know why i wouldn't have gotten in down here this one it looks like he's taking the retrace into a bearish gap after an inverse because yeah a little death candle here but i other than that i don't really understand like what i don't know what this is maybe this is an accident um i do not understand this one bit maybe this is a time thing i don't know so Weird executions here, uh, three years later, don't understand half of this. They can do this and they can do that, but really, I want you to compare and contrast what you see here. All right, so we're looking at intraday price action for NASDAQ E-mini futures, and this is actually uh, the, the main focus of this mentorship. Uh, I believe that this market is worth studying. I believe it is not just limited to NASDAQ, but I believe it's useful to learn as a trader that views obviously the E-mini S&P, the E-mini Dow future, and the E-mini NASDAQ. Now, E-mini NASDAQ is a little bit faster, a little bit more aggressive. And even with that, you can still that trade is it. True. So, that is true. NQ is much, much faster. Yes, it's very slow, very low volume. So I want you to think about what it means to watch price action and understand what it's likely to do before it does it. Now, I'm not promising you're gonna be able to do that right out of the gate. What I'm gonna show you is the compare and contrast to how I can trade versus what I'm promising to teach you in this mentorship, how to find specific setups in your demo account. I'm not trying to entice you to trade with live funds. The teachings will be predominantly through the scope of tradingview.com's paper trading module or just hindsight data. What you're looking at here is actually live executions from today, okay? And I want you to think about if you were able to trade a micro account and you were trading the NAS deck and you were able to capture just one of these moves which one would you like to learn how to find i want you to think about which one really stands out off the entire chart and this is a one minute chart this which one, one right really here. stands out. ifg baby yeah i'll give you a moment you can pause the video and unpause it when you're ready obviously you can see how the market moves from here okay two orders executed here whenever you see this this is actually a reversal so if there is a trade on long it'll reverse and take you the other direction Okay, and then this one here, this is a reversal as well. And then another close, and then another long entry, the exit, a short entry, and then the cover. I'd like for you to consider what it would take for you to find consistency and how many handles, how many full handle moves in an index futures contract that would satisfy you. When I say a handle, that's essentially four ticks, the minimum fluctuation in these markets. An example would be if you were trading the e mini S&P and you were trading obviously the 4450 level and you went long, if it went to 4451, that's a full handle, okay, or four ticks, or four times $12.50 or $50 per handle. The NASDAQ is $20 per handle. So it's slightly different, but it's faster. It moves a lot more, a lot more handles, a lot more aggression. Now it doesn't always move faster. Sometimes we'll have a lethargic price action in this indice or another out of the the three that would be the s p the nasdaq and the dow yeah so nasdaq is like it moves it's the fastest in my opinion um uh, very more volatile than yes but it doesn't really matter if you risk the same like if you're risking 200 dollars in nq or yes it, it who cares about the speed you're still risking 200 dollars and these three markets have the luxury for you that may not have the capability to put up to like $17,000 margin if you were going to trade one full contract of the NASDAQ futures. Uh, most brokers, unless you're using a discount broker, uh, they're going to require you to have deep pockets and cents that you're going to have that about $17,000. And about $12,000 and a half for an E-mini S&P full futures contract. You take basically 
all that, but I'm the ebb and flow. It's not a couple, it's not a handful. And then up here, it's a reversal and then it comes back down and I buy it back here in reverse. So I'm selling short here. I still have no idea what he's buying up. Like, I guess you could say the order block, but why wouldn't he buy here if he's buying off the order block? That makes no sense. So it's gotta be a time thing. And I'm buying long here. 740 to 720, that's 20 handles. Going long here at 720, getting out at Okay, uh, he's going over really basic stuff. Yeah, but you, you probably want the foundation to a trading model. All right, I'm going to go to episode two. I just want to see what he says. So, elements to a trade setup, episode two. All right, folks. Well, we're here. So, technically, this is the first teaching. Uh, I gave you guys an introduction video, obviously. If you haven't watched that one yet, go to the playlist on my YouTube channel. And please watch that one because it will help at least establish the, in my opinion, the proper expectations. That way you understand what you're getting involved with here. And at least it gives me a chance to kind of like break the ice and show you the contrast of what you may be expecting versus what I intend to deliver. All right, so this first installment is going to be elements to a trade setup. All right, so we're looking at the NASDAQ futures March delivery contract. And this is a trading view chart and this is a weekly chart. And I want you to think about each week before the new trading week begins. Okay, well, okay why is this data delayed? That's kind of sus. If you can say I see this D in the top top, this is delayed data. Um, maybe he's not on his account, but that's very odd that his data is delayed. Preferably on the weekend. The idea is you want to try to get a read on what you think that next weekly candle is going to do. Is it going to go higher or is it going to go lower? You're not trying to predict the close of the weekly candle. That's important. You just want to see before this weekly candle opened up. All we had was this indecisive candle. Do you think that this candle that would have formed and opened here is more likely to go higher or lower? And that's the component I want you to focus on with your analysis. What is the market likely? So, so I don't do that. I mean, when I'm looking at a chart, I'm looking at like, see, I don't really try to predict the weekly candle. I just use one hour and four hour PD arrays. You know, I don't like I'm drawing this out and I'm like, oh, I'm going to use this. There's no need to try to predict the weekly candle, in my opinion. I don't like that. I mean, the one, like, there's, if you're trying to get along for the week, then you're trying to buy below where we opened. That's, like, one of the things he talks about. But I don't really like trying to predict the weekly candle because half the time you can't, like, how are you supposed to predict a doji candle here? There's just no way. So I personally just use a four and one hour kind of draw for every eye gaps. That's what I do. So um, I don't like how he does that with the weekly candle. I'm not going to lie to draw to when i say draw to think of it as price being a paper clip and then you have this magnetic impulse that specific price levels and seasonality put on price it'll cause price to gravitate towards certain levels and the measure of speed and magnitude that it moves to get to these levels you learn that over experience that's not something i can transfer it's something you have to practice and see and study and that specific price levels and seasonality put on price. It'll cause price to gravitate towards certain levels. And the measure of speed and magnitude that it moves to get to these levels, you learn that over experience. That's not something. Yeah. So, yeah, you learn like if when you see like a big death candle towards like a liquidity pool, you learn through experience, okay, like this should keep running or this shouldn't keep running. Like that, I don't understand when I first, I remember him saying that and I don't understand what he meant. Now I understand what he means by that three years later. There's like different candles that like the price action will tell you, okay, he, we're not going to stop here. We're going to stop here. Like definitely makes sense what he's saying. Like, for example, um, like earlier, we just got a very, very big candle here. It was like right here, right here. And I figured price would not stop. Like, cause I just know that from screen time and the magnitude and the displacement of these, um, and what's to the left. So good point. I now understand that three years later. So that's kind of cool. I can transfer. It's something you have to practice and see and study and you get a rhythm for it. In the early stages of your development, you want to at least try to focus your attention on where that weekly candle is going to do. Now, here's the thing. It may start. Only thing I disagree with, that's I would focus your mind on like hourly four hour PD arrays and how we react to them. That's what I do. The first half of the week or maybe just one day expand lower. And if you get a setup in that, that's it. You're done. That's how you start working towards consistency. So the only thing you're looking for is a likely movement higher or lower based on the weekly candle. OK, that's all you're doing. That sets your initial bias for the week. Yeah. How, on the daily chart, you're looking for swing highs and swing well, bias. for the week. How are you supposed to predict this weekly candle? There's just no way. Week. 
on the daily chart, you're looking for swing highs and swing lows to get your liquidity. And majority of your trading and the draw on liquidity, what makes the market go higher or lower, it's predominantly found on this time frame. Okay, so majority of your analysis should really be linked to this time frame right here. You have to have an assumption whether you're going to be expecting that weekly candle to expand higher or lower. That's your weekly bias. But then you have to go into the daily chart and figure out basically where you are in the grand scheme of things on that weekly range expanding higher or lower. Because we're looking for lower prices and we're looking for weakness, the expectation is we want to see every short-term low, like this would be a short-term low, this would be a short-term low, and underneath those lows is going to be sell stops. Okay, that's liquidity. When I say learn to start looking for where the market's going to draw to, it's drawing to one of two things, okay? It's drawing to stops, which is liquidity, or it's running to an imbalance. Now, what's that mean? Above old highs, buy stops. Below old lows, sell stops. Imbalances is something like this over here, where you have one so yeah, a lot of people, what they get confused about is, oh, we have to sleep a lower high, like price will run a lower high, for example, this. But that's not the only thing the market will seek. The market will seek fair rally gap. So unfair, like this is fair value that it will seek. Well, I didn't understand that when I first started. I thought it was only highs and lows. I'm like, oh, why? How is there stop losses in here? But you can actually treat this as a swing high if there's a fair rally gap right here. So single candle pass higher and the previous candles high is here and the next candles low is here so it only went up look that's an inversion right here that's an inversion he never said anything about it though probably one candle nothing moved down the overlap with that same delivery on that price candle there so in other words that's an imbalance it's only going higher and nothing else is here to offset that and efficiently deliver price on the opposite end so we're looking for lower prices. We're looking for an expansion. We're looking at the daily chart. We're going to drop down into the hourly chart. Okay. Now what I have here is a framework for looking at the weekly range on an hourly chart. So all I did was beginning on midnight New York time, Monday's candle, and then Friday's close, and then the beginning of Friday's trading at midnight. Now what I'm delineating here is the fact that we had a nice sell off on Thursday and the market went into consolidation overnight. Notice what happens here on Friday. This is that old low on the daily chart. That's what we're thinking and we're assuming that it's going to draw to because that daily chart, there's lots of liquidity and large fund traders, large institutional traders. He, does, he doesn't explain why, like, why is there liquidity below there? Like, why is it drawing to the low? He's not really saying much about that. Institutional mindset investors will be looking at these old lows and old highs and liquidity providers will be looking to take business in around these same levels. So if we know that this level down here, is the old daily low. And again, let me take it back up to the chart on the daily chart. That's this low right here, okay? By dropping down into the hourly chart, that level is here. All I'm doing is transposing those. If I was a new trader, I'd be so confused right now. I'm not going to lie. This is so confusing. He just has, oh, daily low. We're going to it. Like, wow, this is not, this is not easy to understand. I will not, I'll admit. Daily levels right to this hourly chart. The entire week has been bearish. Okay, it's been going lower since the beginning. Then we had consolidation in here. The market creates this short term high and this short term low. What rests above that short term high? If you've taken notes and been paying attention, it's buy stops. What's resting below this low here? Sell stops. Watch closely. The market trades down initially and takes out the sell stops. Why would it do that first? This is inducing shorts. Okay, so it engineers liquidity. Even if the idea is that they want to take the market down to this level, if it's been consolidating, I'd like to see them do this type of move here, where it drops down first, it's kind of like a sucker play. Anybody that has a sell stop below here, they want to sell on weakness, they're going to get tripped into the marketplace. So now they're triggered in short, and then they start doing a run against those traders and against those that were already short from this high. So what are they doing? The market's being driven higher and the algorithm's gonna attack that buy stop liquidity pool. Why would they wanna do that? Number one, it's gonna punish those individuals here that went short. When it drives above this high here, it sends all those buy stops into market orders, flooding the marketplace. That gives a huge influx of willing buyers at a high price, which is the perfect counterparty to smart money that wants to sell at a high price. Remember, the market wants to go down here. So when it drives up to here, those buy stops are the counterparty or the other side of a smart money trader that's wanting to go short because they're going to sell short. They got to sell it to somebody who wants to buy it at a high price. That's why the market does this. In your notes, you want to record anytime a significant price move lower is expected, always anticipate some measure of a stop hunt on buy stops or a short term high being taken out. Obviously it's reversed when you're looking for high. Yeah, that's valid. He's explaining this all in hindsight though, like which I do as well. But what the difference between him and me is I try to tell you, okay, here's why it does this. There's a PDA rate or a fair value to the left. He's just saying, oh, the market does this. Yeah, no crap.
the market goes here next. No crap, like to take out stops. We see that, but why? I feel like it, he should explain more why it does that. Um, because not always. We, there's been I've been bearish, and not always we will run a high before going lower. Like, it's not every situation that will happen. There's like different situations. I mean, this is only episode two, so I just he guys. I wish you'd explain more why. Because as a new trader, I'd be really confused still. Higher prices, generally you'll see a short-term low taken out and sell stops taken before you see a very pronounced rally higher. Don't take my word for it. Go through to your charts and you'll see it's actually occurring almost on a daily basis. So we're going to drop down into a 15-minute time frame. So that same old low level down here and that high I just mentioned on the hourly chart and the low on the hourly chart has now been defined with a small little line segment. Another inversion here <laughs> worked perfectly. Okay, so we have a trend line here and a trend line here. That's the extent of a trend line. That's it. I only use them to highlight to my students. These levels are not on my chart. I'm watching a naked chart. You, while you're developing, you should have these levels drawn out on your chart because it helps you build and ingrain the idea that this is where liquidity is. It keeps you focused on that because it's easy to look at all these candles swarming if you have the luxury of watching it in life and you can lose sight of where you are. And you, once you lose your bearings, it's really confusing. And this. Yeah, I don't. I always like, even if, even though he knows a lot, like why wouldn't he still draw the line? Because you don't know if it's swept for sure. But three years later, like I barely, if I'm not like on live stream or anything, I don't even draw anything either. Like I will not draw the fair value gap. I just kind of use the naked chart as well. This helps you keep those bearings in mind. And what do I mean by that? Well, I mentioned how the market dropped down initially and that takes the sell stops out. So sell side liquidity has been attacked. Traders are now tripped in going short. If they sold on a break, trying to be a breakout artist. And then the algorithms go right back up to an area. Here's the thing. In live time, how, you don't know if this is going to reverse or not. When I see this candle live time, that's when you kind of know, okay, this induced do shorts. You don't know here on this candle, though. Like, this is hindsight, so it's easy for him to say that. But I kind of know, okay, here on this candle, okay, now this is probably going to run stops and go to this high. I don't think that in here. Okay, that's my opinion, though. Where it's been cleanly delivered relative equal highs. See how this high here, right before it dropped, is basically the same high here. Notice that? So retail traders see this and they trust it as what? Resistance. So the books always say, put your buy stop if you're gonna go short right above. This is the number one liquidity pool I target, equal highs, works like a charm. Above and clear level of resistance. Well, these levels work for a short period of time, but majority of the time, you see this event right here. And this is how I teach my students to go in here and look for those types of events. Because what did I just tell you moments ago about looking for significant price moves? Before there's a significant price move of any real magnitude or importance, generally there's gonna be a stop hunt. It takes place right before that price delivery occurs. So what does it look like? You have relative equal highs. This and I, I only know it's gonna be a stop hunt after this candle. I don't know for sure on this candle right here. Now, if there's a fair value to the left, I will anticipate this to be a stop punt if I really, truly think we're going to go lower. But I don't know if this is going to become a hot stop punt until this candle. And he he makes it sound really easy because it's hindsight, so it's going to be easy. But I don't in a lot of time, I don't really know until I see this candle, which then I'll look for a fair value gap to short. It's high and it's high. The market goes up when we're what? We're expecting lower prices on that weekly chart. We're on the last day of the week. It's already been heavy. It's weak. And the only thing it's been doing is consolidating. And the first thing it did was broke out to the downside, tripping what? Traders in a breakout to go short. So now they have traders caught on the wrong side, offside, and now they want to take the market up here where those buy stops are going to be resting for those that were smart enough to sell short here or here and didn't get out below here. So the larger pool of liquidity is going to be resting here. I, I see why he's teaching what he's teaching though. Like he's getting your brain to understand in hindsight, oh, here's why this happens. So then you start looking for it for live time. Like, I, I get why he's teaching what he's teaching now, but um, I, I think he's trying to, because my brain, I remember seeing this and teaching this, and I was like, wow, I never realized that whenever we go below low, we don't really don't go below, we just reverse. And that's what my brain always thought. So he's kind of teaching you, like, your, your connection, your brain to make that in hindsight. So then he starts seeing a live time. So I kind of get why he's saying this now. Because it's in sync with the downtrend. And everybody that was short the day before, they seen this high form. And once it broke below this low here, they all rushed and trailed their stop loss right above that. But this pool of liquidity, once this occurs, you want to drop down to your lower time frames and start looking for something specific. And let's go into those lower time yeah. frames and find out what that yeah. is. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Beautiful explanation. I already see an IPG here. I would have taken this 100%. Beautiful. Bullish candle. This is this candle is going to fake out retail. 
they think this is going to be a breakout, but we know it's a double top. And again, we don't want it long after this hits. We get a death candle closing below this candle and then beautiful retracement. So A plus right? and an A plus inversion down here as well. We take out these sell apps. I don't know if we're going to reverse until I see this candle that inverses both these. And I'm long here. Very, very, very clean. So you can see why you go into lower time frame because there's really no opportunities here, right? This is the 15 minute and then he goes on a two. So as you all know, I only use inverse for reality gaps. And recently I made a full free PDF of inverse for reality gap rating setups that I use to rate my own setups A through C. So if you want to check that out, just click the first link in the description. It's completely free and uh, hopefully should help you. Lower time frames and start looking for something specific. And let's go into these lower time frames and find out what that is. Okay, here's a two minute chart. Why a two minute chart? Well, two minute, one minute or three minute or five. Five minutes still has a lot of room for- Notice how it doesn't say four minute. I never go in the four minute. <laughs> I just don't see, hear people use it. So that's why. He doesn't say it either though. Balances still occur underneath that time frame. And what do I mean by that? The one minute, two minute, three minute chart tends to be the best for finding the imbalances for indices. Okay. Don't take my word for that. Okay. If you're looking for high frequency setups intraday, the one, two or three minute chart, they just offer a real good clarity. The reason why, because the high frequency trading algorithms are operating on nothing really higher than three minutes. But majority of the time they're like seconds. Okay. 15 second, 30 second, 45 second, 60 second intervals. Okay. And what they're looking for. 45 second. I haven't heard that before, but notice I didn't say the five minute. I hate the five minute chart. I'm not going to lie. I hate it. I took a losing trade yesterday and I five minute IVG. I just don't like it. Are these small little imbalances. And what does that look like? Well, we had that run on the buy stops here. Okay. Remember that? He's not going to say the inversion. He's never going to say that. Old high here, the old high here, old high here. It runs right on through that. Once this occurs on that higher time frame, 15 minute time frame, you want to drop down to the lower time frames. And I'm using the two minute chart because this is exactly what I was using to find that imbalance. The market creates a short term low here and then it breaks below that. This is key. This is called a break in market structure. Now, the foundations and underlying framework is we're in a market that's what? Weekly? bearish we're expecting that weekly candle to expand lower it's been expanding all week yeah but the here's the thing the two minute has no effect and the the weekly has no effect on the two minute the two minute does what the two minute does based off like the 15 minute hourly the weekly going down means nothing to do with the two minute just way too high of a time frame to compare you that's why you see this long setup work again the weekly candle has no effect on this so i get what he's saying but without the weekly candle i would have taken the short regardless I don't need to see the weekly or daily candle. I don't need to guess where it's going to go to take the short. All I see is a run of buy stops, death candle through this for reality gap. I mean, I don't need to know what the daily and weekly candle are doing for this. So we have momentum on because it's a good setup. I'll take every time on our side. We have a consolidation that's occurred and we had a pool liquidity engineered with these relative equal highs and the market broke out to the downside first and then they ran on the highs. So once it went here, we don't rush in there and just go short because it went above the old highs. We're looking for some specific signature. Exactly. Yeah. So he's saying we don't just short here. We, we're waiting for that market structure shift or that IVG, whatever. That tips its hand to you. Okay. And I promise you, when you start going through your charts and it's going to be homework for you, you're going to see this occurring almost every single day. And if it's not doing it this way, it's doing it the opposite direction as a buy. It runs the stops. Then we have a short term low and then it breaks below it. So now we have a break in market structure. Once this low is broken, you're going to. Yeah, I don't like that break in market structure. I like the when the low that made a new high is broken. So here is where I would say the market structure shifted or no here, this lower here, not here because this low didn't make a new high. So that's one thing I disagree with. I don't like you will see the signature in price. If if we break a low that has not ran a high, this does not work as many times as you think. It works here because of liquidity. That's why it works. I look for this little area here. That's that imbalance I mentioned in the beginning, right? So what's happening is, is the market's going to go right up inside that area there. And that's where you want to sell. Now, if you don't sell there, you can drop down to a lower time frame, one minute chart. If this was a three minute chart, you can go down to a one minute chart and look for that to occur on that time frame as well. And it many times will form if you're looking at a lower time frame, like say this was a five minute chart and you looked at a one minute chart, you'd find one down in here. It's a matter of scaling down in your time frames because once you have an underlying premise to the market now likely to go lower, 
it becomes an easy thing to look for these types of things. Yeah, that's why I can go down to like the 15 second and see a really good setup because it's like a one minute setup, it's a two minute setup, it can also be like a 15 second setup. So in your chart, once you're developing this idea and, and learning it, you're gonna highlight this candle's low, this candle's high, and this right here is what I teach my students as a fair value gap. The idea is it wants to go up into that imbalance there. And once it does that, as soon as it enters that area, the algorithm that delivers price, once you see these patterns, over and over and over again it's very easy to execute on them this is what it looks like this is what you're looking for okay these are the fingerprints of that setup so if you know what they are and what those components are that make up i'm not gonna lie i like this a lot more than i thought i would every i, I still stand by what he teaches i really he's teaching you signature and price that's signature and price is so so important that's like trading for years i now know like every good signature and price up this setup you'll be able to find them but focus on the imbalance after the market structure breaks so this big candle here it breaks down look at the next candle it opens and trades higher and stops right there so from this candle's low and this candle's high when this candle starts trading as soon as it opens and it runs right up into that that's a short you can go right in there and sell short be done. the other thing is he's picking the most picture perfect examples so you're not going to see something this clean every day i think we've seen this like twice just this week so you patience is the other thing he's not talking about because you do not see this every day Done. Now, where's your so, stop going to be? Well, you can put it above this high here, or you can put it above this candle's high, whichever your risk parameters allow for. Interesting. Looking at this your stop going to be candle's high, when this candle starts trading, as soon as it opens and it runs right up into that, that's a short. You can go right in there and sell short. Be done. Now, where's your stop going to be? Well, you can put it above this high here, or you can put it above this candle's high, whichever your risk. Interesting. Yeah, I don't know. I don't like that. I would put the stop above the high because I've seen us wick above a fair like that many times. Parameters allow for. Looking at this first. But notice how he's talking about stop losses. That's great. Okay, stop losses, stop losses, because he's implying it's not have a 100% win rate. We're going to look at the logic in here. And I want you to think about after this forms and you see that as your choice setup or entry. If it starts to move lower, you can still get in it. There's no reason not to think that you, know, you can't get in it here or in here. It's close to or in close proximity to where that area is as an entry. Once you take out a low though, once that occurs, then it becomes a matter of your chasing price. And if you try to get in, especially if you like use a market order, you may see it trade right to this low and say, okay, now I believe it's gonna go down. You put a market order and sell short and then slippage gets you down here. And it creates a larger area of risk that you have to assume. It's just, it's problematic. You wanna to learn to trust going short when the market's going higher. Yeah, wow. I, I do that all the time. I, I didn't even know he said that. So he's talking about you could enter here after seeing the reaction. I do it all the time. That's just something I learned from experience. I don't really think I learned that from him, though. And that feels scary at first. But once you start seeing this pattern form, it becomes easy to trust it. And in fact, you want to be doing that. You want to be selling short, expecting lower prices right when the candle's going up. If you're looking at this framework here and we've taken the buy stops, we have our entry pattern here. What would you be looking for as a downside objective? Well, I'm going to teach you the liquidity matrix. This here is your range. This is the low of the day, and this is the high of the day thus far. So if we take that range and split it from the low to the high to get the midpoint, all of this can be determined by a simple 50 level on a Fibonacci. So you drag your Fib from this high down to that low or vice versa and have your 50 level highlighted. Then anything above that 50 level, this is referred to from an algorithmic stance as a premium market. It means it's expensive. Now markets can stay in a premium for a while and not go to a discount, which would be below the 50 point. Okay, 50%, anything down here is a discount. If you're bearish. If okay, D he doesn't highlight why I draw that, but it's because we take out a low and a high. So he's drawing the range of the high that got taken out and the low. I don't think he would draw like discount or premium on this leg here. I mean, maybe he would for like the lower time frame. I mean, yeah, he probably would for lower time frames, but like, the important part is this is a dealing range. It, it's taking out the lows and the, se the sell stops and the buy stops. If you're ever going short, you want to look at the previous range. Where are you at inside that range? So when this formed here, that little fair value gap, once that formed, you're thinking, okay, we are in a premium. So algorithms will want to go to a discount. That's the opposing side of the marketplace. So if it's going short here, it's driving the market lower. What does that mean? The algorithm is going to start pricing lower. You can have all the buyers in the world come in. If the algorithm is in a sell program and it's going lower, it does not matter. It's going to reprice lower and lower and lower. And then what will happen is those buyers that may come in with a huge influx of volume, they're going to get crushed. So the market's moving from this premium high 
this specific entry point to a level below the 50 of this range, this low and this high. I want you to think about what below this level here, the 50 level, what is resting below here? Cell stops. Cell stops. So now think about the idea of someone like you and I that would see this ideal entry as a short. We have to sell to get in that short. How do we get out of that short? We got to buy it back or cover it by buying. Well, we're going to find willing sellers at a low price relative to this point here. They're willing already sitting down there with their sell stops right below that low. Now look closely. What else resides right near that low? Right there is that imbalance I mentioned. Okay. It's only one single candle. And the market will draw to this because it's unfilled. See how the market didn't fill it here? So, yeah. The, he's, ex, he's explaining this well, but I don't know if a new trader would understand that. I mean, I'm understanding it because it's kind of how I teach it. But I'm not going to lie. I like this better than I thought it would three years later. This is great stuff, man. Candle passing up and the previous candle's high and the next candle's low. That area right there is an imbalance. From this area here, it went down below the 50 level and attacked these sell stops and completely closed in this imbalance. So every point of this candle's high to this candle's low, that range with the candle only going up, that's a buy side imbalance. It has to have an equal delivery to be efficiently priced and booked by the algorithm. It goes down and completely closes it back in with down movement. Notice the candle on this here, it opens and then trades down. So it fulfills its role of balancing the buy side offering, now the sell side offering. So that is an efficiently delivered price move. Precision elements from the entry here down to here. I basically just handed you an ATM machine. This repeats every single week, every single week. These are simple elements that repeat. What you're looking for is a run on liquidity, buy stops or sell stops. If you're bearish, you're looking for buy stops to be ran. Then a break in market structure, lower, a short-term low being broken. That's what it looks like right here. Short-term swing low. We have a candle high, I'm sorry, a candle higher to the left with, the, with its low here. Then you have the low of this candle and the next candle is higher low than this one. So you have a swing low formed. If you have that and then you have a break below that, if it happens that creates a gap like this, that's what you're looking for. When it trades up into that, you can go short. Or if you want to use sell stops, you can use a sell stop in this candle here and just let it trip you in and then use the high of that candle as your stop. All right, so I'm going to give you some homework in closing. I want Wait you to go, if it happens that creates a gap like this, that's what you're looking for. When it trades up into that, you can go short. Or if you want to use sell stops, you can use a sell stop in this candle here and just let it trip you in and then use the high of that candle as your stop. All right, so I'm going to give you some homework. Uh, no, don't do that. Don't do that. That's not good. Homework in closing. I want you to go through all of the E-mini futures contract charts. Okay, just like I showed you here, these time frames. Go back and look at the presentation and see what the time frames I gave you. Dude, okay, wow. I see why ICT is a good mentor now. Yeah, everything. I I honestly accepted the disagree a lot more things there. Yeah, wow. This is really all I need. Um, just explain that perfectly. I have to hear rants in between, but that is a great, great, great video. Great video. Ten out of ten. Uh, so really expected. Honestly, I accept and disagree more things. I was wrong. Um, I, I mean, he's the only thing I don't like is he's showing perfect, perfect, perfect setup. That's a perfect setup. You don't get that that much. That setup that clean to that extent does not happen every day. Maybe in like the 15 second time frame, but that is absolutely perfect. Um, and yeah, man, good setup. Good, good stuff here. So that's my thoughts. Um, if you haven't already watched this, watch this whole mentorship. Um, the no rant's really good. Um, and yeah, very, very, very good stuff. So that is going to be it for this video. Don't forget to use code Dodgy, 80% off Apex account on apextraderfunding.com. It's an 80% off discount link in the description and that's it. Peace.